Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Perry. Thank you for the feedback, Robert. Isabella, can you hear me? And hear you. Okay. Gilbert, what about you? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, as we wait for the others to come, you know, just like for us to have a a moment of prayer and intercession for those uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes that we usually wait for. So I will ask uh, Isabella to be our presider for today. Karibu, Isabella. Um, thank you, Kerry. Bwaneso uh, Kufiwe. So, as we start, uh, Psalms 100, enter his, his, his gates with thanksgiving. So we can start with thanksgiving. Just air out your thanks to the Lord. Um, he has been good to us throughout this week. Amekuwa nasisi, ametembea nasi. Psalms 103, it says, uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities, heals our diseases, redeems our life from destruction. So there are many reasons to thank the Lord this night. So we will start from there. Uh, Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We give you praise. I would like us to pray for the youths. Remember all the youths, remember your friends, remember the youths all over the world. Uh, wakumbuke tu, tu, tujikabidhi mikononi mwabwana. 
yes, prayer is very important as youth and we need it right now. Mambo mengi anaendelea ulimwenguni, but once we guard ourselves in prayer, God will get all the glory. So just pray for the youth every year. Asante Mungu wetu na Bwana wetu pokea asante kwa 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 kwa
So nalibariki na kulimua jina lako Kikisema hakuna lieni kama wewe Asante wana kwa uaminifu wako na uku wako Asante kwa kutusikiza Asante kwa kutenda mfalme Kwa utukufa jina lako Tunalini na kulibariki jina lako Siku wa leo Tukisema hakuna lieni kama wewe Na ni katika jina la Yesu Kristo Tumeomba hata na kuamini Amen um, Kerry Amen um, Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, thank Mr. Abena, for that time. Without further ado, I'll welcome Robert. Continue from there. Karibu, Robert. Uh, thank you so much, Kerry. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello. Oh, okay, thank yes. you so much. Um, so, um, I really wanted to have this session with you guys so that I could be able to share what I have in my heart. And um, uh, thank you, Michelle. And um, what really came to me is something that I really found so much interesting and so much inspiring. And um, I wanted also to, to have it in our lives. So today I want us to go through our Bibles to uh, Open our Bibles through uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13. If you are all there, um, to go up, I can share my tab. Let's see if I can share my tab. I will use, let's see. Um, so I believe Newton now, now. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 to 13, it says, I, uh, Paul says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you are concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need of, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I, I know what is to be need. And I know what is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or I in want. That in I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. Uh, these are basically words of um, Apostle Paul. And you can clearly, from verse 10, it says, uh, he rejoiced greatly in the Lord that uh, the, uh, 
the, the Philippians have renewed his concerns for me because they wanted to see him, they wanted to visit him in prison, they brought him gifts. Now, instead of, you know, saying thanks, thanks for uh, handing over gifts to me, I really appreciate, Paul goes ahead and, you know, bring out a remarkable statement. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying all this because uh, that I'm need, but I've learned to be content in every circumstances that he was in. He was in prison at that moment and he has been through uh, difficult situations during his, uh, if you read the whole book of Acts, during his journey and realize all the challenges that he had gone through. But in all of that, he ever learned to be, uh, to be content in whatever he had. Now, clearly, Paul, this is a testimony that Paul wanted to to, to, to brought out so that we could also to learn in our sides. Um, he, he, had, he, had, he, had, he had been able to found, find contentment throughout his journey. And also, he has been able to experience being the, the, this spirit of being content in his life. And as well, it has proved something upon his life. That's why he, he when he received grief, gift, he, he doesn't think like he was in need of something because in whatever circumstances that he has been in, he has always been in a position to be, to be content because he knows uh, in that situation, it is only God that strengthens him. So he never lacks or anything now if this spirit of contentment really worked in paul it's basically best also for uh, in a position also to work in us as well now you find that he has experienced the best as well as the hearts of life and you know all those aspects ambassador mcquark is experienced one thing that he has ever learned is to be content Okay, and if you can clearly see on verse 12, um, he's saying, I'm not saying because uh, I'm, I'm in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever circumstances. Okay, it clearly says that contentment is, is you, you learn, you learn to be, you learn to be content. And when you talk about learning, we all go to school to learn. Now, when, when you're maybe learning a particular uh, topic, you may not have a grasp of it in that particular time. That's right. Basically, it simply means contentment doesn't come that quickly that you learn to have. We will go to see how what contentment clearly means. But contentment is it's not something that you just grasp quickly or uh, you, you just get it easily. It's something that needs you know time and over time for for it to grow in you okay so it's more of a process so what does it mean to be content in regards of every circumstances that we all go through in in in, in the google version or another in the dictionary you will clearly see that, uh, contentment means having that self satisfaction you know you you are self um, sufficient Okay, it brings you joy when now you're self-satisfied. Okay, it's also that state of being self-satisfaction or the state of being independent of external circumstances. You are all satisfied. Okay, but now uh, here Paul doesn't mean uh, about being self, uh, uh, not being in a, in that in that in uh, situation of being self-independence. But what he really meant was that he was having what to call an inner sense of rest or peace that comes from being, you know, right with God. That's what it means of being content, being having that inner sense of rest or at peace that when it comes to God. Also, contentment means more of finding joy in what God has given you. Praise God. Contentment means more of fine joy in what God has given. And contentment is more of an attitude because when you wear that attitude of contentment in you, having that notion that um, everything that I have within my reach, God has provided me. I don't have to worry about what tomorrow may come or what tomorrow says. 
or what so whatever circumstances that i'm in maybe i'm liking food maybe i'm liking this and this because i've been in a position where i had plenty and i always thank god because of that but when you're in that attitude of having that i will be satisfied with what god has given me then you are in the right path now we may get to understand where does this where, where do we um get our source of content of contentment from uh now contentment basically most people normally place it under valuable things um money you can place it under money you can place it under job you can place it under education you can place it under uh under that situation you want to come to relax uh sickness is something that gives satisfaction okay and what really really matters is that most of these valuable things or these situations that we draw our contentment more of it it clearly it, it's clearly much on our heart because at the end all these things may go away and then we have a spirit without have to grow a spirit of uh, discontentment okay discontentment is what now bears what we call murmuring complaining all those are forms of discontentment a, a good example if um your source of contentment or your source or your object of satisfaction was like uh, maybe if i get this good job i'll be able to you know build a house or maybe um or maybe buy a car or maybe you know marry a good wife or maybe being married by a good man or maybe uh, having something that really satisfy your heart but then you realize that uh, happiness is just an elusive or what you call is just more of an illusion if you basically you know is you basically put your satisfaction under valuable things or other that circumstances or that situation when you base your source of contentment and satisfaction or um, situation or those particular circumstances then you find that your happiness may become elusive what do you mean by elusive is that the moment you get to that particular destination for example you really wanted to satisfy you your heart feels joy when you get that particular job because you know when i get this particular job then oh my god i'll be in a position to get a new car okay i'll be in a position to buy these new clothes and then when you get to that position now you realize that ah, Abana, okay i'm in this new job ah, but okay Ibado, i think i think Niki kazi nyingine pesa nyingi, i'll be able to are you seeing that or or maybe um you find that your heart defines another level or another destination because it's not that enough okay it's not enough that's that 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 thing that you really wanted it doesn't get enough of it okay you need more and more of that okay now you find that this source is deeper than your circumstances because you need more of more of it now this this does this what to call idol you know, because you'll be needing like for example it's money you find that it's not now enough i've got this new job i need more money now. i need money now okay i have money i want to buy this one but okay this guy i have is not enough i need to get a new one so you know you need more money now that clearly brings what to call idolatry okay because what you clearly look for you look for things as a source of contentment okay rather than god as the source of your joy because you know god created our hearts or god created us in order to find ultimate joy in him praise god so instead of drawing our source of contentment or our source of satisfaction or joy or happiness from things people because that will in the end will end up drawing what to call discontentment when all things falls apart praise god once in a murmuring complaining oh this didn't work out because of this and this because those things fall apart and they are only a source of satisfaction but when you now source your your contentment to christ 
is more than enough. Praise God. Is more than enough. You'll not be like, ah, I need to go to another level. No, it's more than enough because he has everything within your reach. Praise God. So your source of contentment should be in Christ Jesus, comes from Christ Jesus. Because as we grow in him, that's how our satisfaction grows. When you grow in Christ Jesus, that's when our satisfaction grows, you know, more and more and more. Praise God. And when you focus on him as our source of contentment, then we are unmoved by any circumstances or any situations. Praise God. Now, this where this where the, 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 the case where by now you find um, if we move in with uh, if we move contentment with any circumstances, this simply means that we are not looking for Jesus as our source of contentment. It basically means we are looking for other things as our source of satisfaction. So, guys, it's high time now we should really focus on God as our source of, of uh, joy, as a source of contentment in everything that we do. The, the same case thing, the same case when you when you when you do uh, as Jesus in every circumstance. Yes, they have Jesus. Okay, but um when when, when but when, when when this sickness is healed i'll be okay you know what happens when you place plus jesus in every situation this simply means that uh, jesus is not enough praise god if you put plus jesus in your circumstances it simply means he's not enough for example like you, you want the circumstances you know you want the situation to happen so that your heart may be feel okay my friend something is wrong with your heart if you really want your heart to be in, you know, to be satisfied you if you want if you really want that situation to happen so that your heart should be satisfied then you really really need to understand that your heart has something why you know what plus jesus bring contentment doesn't bring you know anything plus jesus for example like um Yes, I have Jesus. Yes, I know. But if this sickness is healed, I'll be okay. I'm a, yes, I have Jesus. I know. But if if I get this man, I'll be happy. Now, get get that statement clear. You have Jesus, yes. But if you need this man, I'll be happy. If I give this money, I'll be happy. Where do you, where is your source of contentment there? Your source of contentment is in that money, not Jesus. So it's a high time we should find a way whereby we are drawing our source of contentment from. Praise God. Um, uh, you see, uh, it is very bad to have a desire. It actually, it's not bad to have a desire for a problem to be solved. Eh? But if you, if you desire for it to be solved, for you to be happy, then something is really wrong with your heart. Praise God. Let me get that again. It is not bad to desire for your problem to be solved but if you desire for it to be solved for you to be happy then your heart has a problem praise god so what really i'm trying to bring out point is that we should not draw our source of happiness from people for things money yes money brings happiness but in the long run money is the root of all evil it's good <laughs> so we should you know draw our source of contentment from christ jesus i remember um, during the high time of corona corona for everyone i remember during that particular time and what i used to do i remember there were no jobs all jobs um it was all tough all around and, and uh, i remember realizing nikiangalia hakuna mbele ana nyuma okay mama ananipigia simu ikuje nyumbani cho sika uko peke yako and i was like ah to survive too i didn't know where i was heading to i didn't know where i was going to but one thing i realized that uh, if I put my focus on a human being, I mean, if I put my trust on a human being, 
I'll be cast, okay? Ambo kuna kifungu nasema kwamba mtu mwenye mwanadamu amelaniwa, sio? Ama ambaye anaika imani kwa mwanadamu. But if you if if you put all your trust in God, saying that God, I trust you in this situation. I know despite if if you provide food for those birds in the air. Mimi ni nani? Na umenihimisha this zaidi ya everything. Okay, if he, if he, if he gets you know wale maua kama mwenyewe anapatia that beautiful scent na huyo ni nani akosesha akukosesha so you know then when i went to church i met mr william i remember mr william ko tukika kule kwa sende sukuluko tukitumia wifi and we started sharing and then this word akanigusia and it was stuck to my heart from that very point paka sahi kwamba hii katika situation just learn to be content. Wao oh, sio kwa kuna vitu vingi. Sio kwa kukula vizuri, kuna kula mkuku, hmm? kuna kula vizuri nyama, simjioni, eh? Lakini hizo kumbuka hichi ni kipindi ambacho Mungu amekuweka hapo. So what you need to learn, don't complain. Don't mama. Just learn to be content. Okay? And it reminds me, if you go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto him. Because his peace surpasses every understanding. He says his peace, the supernatural peace that surpasses every understanding will fill your heart. Now, in that moment, when you pray in that situation, and you just said, Lord, I thank you in this situation. I know that, Lord, you're working things for me, Lord. I know you are more than enough for me. You are Jaira. You know, you are just, you know, your heart is filled with us giving. What really happens is that out of nowhere, because, you know, that supernatural peace will fill your heart. And people will be wondering, uh, but they used to get calls. Eh? They, I used to have a friend who called Kifaya and I was a friend. And I told him, I'm going to be a friend. Una survive aje huko Mombasa na kuna kazi. Na kuna chakula. Na hey, my friend, mimi hata na hala hata sasa ina kula sima na omena and I mimi sijui hata chakula kinakuja because God provides. Praise God. It's a, it's a matter of you when you learn the secret. Paul tells us he learned the secret of being content in every situation. I know now you are in surplus. Learn to be content. I know now you are in a difficult situation learn to be content don't let the circumstances go to your heart in such a way that you pray that lord no just trust god don't let the circumstances get into your heart let your heart be filled with joy praise god now how do we live a content life how do we live a content life paul clearly says in um if you read verse 12 he says i know what is need to be i know what is need to be need and i know what to have in plenty i have learned the secret of being content in every situation whether fed or hungry praise god to learn how to live your contact life i'm katika hali god is in providence of job is in providence of that um uh, 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 uh you know the desire of your heart you know, uh, is in is, is in providence of food, is in providence of good health, is in providence of uh, strength in our lives. It's it's a matter of learning. It's a process that we go through in life, knowing that Jesus is more than enough. The first thing that we're able to learn is we think biblically. Praise God. We think biblically. We can we can read that uh, to verse four. If uh, someone has um, Bible with us, if I can use Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Let me check on that. The chapter 4, verse 8. Let me use my Bible. Uh, sorry, I'm just using the net. That's why I clearly see that. Let me use this one. Let me read this. Chapter 4, verse 8. The Bible say, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever it is true, whatever it is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, 
if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Praise God. So basically, Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever it is true, whatever it is noble, whatever it is right, whatever it is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever it is admirable, whatever it is excellent, praise what you think about those things. He's talking about, we think about things that are positive, that bring positive focus on our lives. He doesn't talk about, think about those things that are false. Think about those things that are hard. Think about those things that are ugly. Think about those things that are not admirable. They're not, you know, those are about negative. You see, negativity, what it really does in life, it's, it really removes your focus from Christ. Now, when you out of focus on Christ, you are out of your destiny. Because when you focus on Christ, is where your destiny is. Praise God. We got discontented because we focus on the negativity rather than focusing on God's word. We need to think biblically. Praise God. Uh, Paul, I'll be taking a king, is that? He got fit on king, is that? Capitani Ali Ningi, Pakalakin, and Yokwamba, and as a Makwamba, to live is for Christ. And dying is gain. And on a comba, I may share to a coco Christ, not a kifariki, to come on Gazika Kuleko Christ. So it was. So he focused on the positivity. Like in the Kamaka, you was my age, your money. Eh, happen a kubaya. Eh, Munga Patan said, you know, if he had focused on the negativity, then he'd lose focus. Praise God. So God really knows, you know. Ile, ile safari ambayo Mungu alianzisha katika maisha yako atakamilisha mwenyewe maana kama singetaka upite katika njia hiyo hangi akikatisha kitambo okay so because he begin a good work in you he will bring it to completion so we need to think biblically for us to be able to live a very contented life number two that will help us to live in a contented life is to pray continually. That we'll read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. If I'll be using this one, let me see if it can work. Um, I don't think it can work. Uh, let me see. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Will you allow me to use my screen? Let me to use my network since um, this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. Praise God. Do not be anxious about anything, but through prayer and thanksgiving, let your request be known to, known to God. So when when we when we uh, clearly pray, it helps us, you know, to avoid anxiety. Okay, praise God. Okay, there's an issue with my network. Sorry, need to focus on that. Okay, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You are in that circumstances, you are in that situation. Okay, just invite Him. Invite him, God, I invite you in my situation. Work on it. Okay? Because in verse 7, it says, um, in verse 7 to 8, says that his peace that surpasses every understanding will fill your heart. So when you pray continually in that difficult situation and we submit all our requests to him, we will be having that peace and we're able to live in a very contented life. And the last part, how to live a Contented life is to trust him wholeheartedly. Is to trust God wholeheartedly. Okay? Because uh, if, if you go back to Philippians chapter 10, verse 13, it was saying that uh, he can do all things through him who strengthens him. Okay? He can do all things through God who strengthens him. Because, you know, he, he, he realized that it is God who strengthens him. 
okay so as a matter of fact what i really want to remind is that in every circumstances that you are in don't say that oh i cannot do this okay don't say that oh i cannot work on this just say i can't do this because you know why it is him that will strengthens you praise god so just you need to know that we are not all alone in all our circumstances he's always there with us and he will give us strength and we'll never get weary okay and we could be able to do marvelous things because it is he who strengthens us and that was the word i wanted to share with you and praise god and be blessed back to you gary amen thank you very much uh, robert for that word i would like to let us pray um everlasting god we thank you and we worship your holy name for your word that you have put unto us we open up our hearts god and we direct our thoughts and our desires to you that we may be content in you teach us every day to be content in you even when we find it hard remind us again and again that our true satisfaction comes from you and you alone and through all things lord let your will be done in jesus name i pray and believe amen um thank you very much uh, kaka for the word that you have brought to us um thank you penda kuchukua ifursa to welcome anyone if you have our a word to share concerning what we have learned if you have a few words um the flow is yours kama kuna mtu yote analo jambo concerning being content anyone hmm there's god amen uh, uh thank you so much uh, robert uh, for sharing such a wonderful uh, word of uh, being con temp yeah kizungu ngumu kutosheka eh kiswahili i think uh, uh it has reflected back just a minute Okay, as you wait for Gilbert, if there's so, anyone, sorry for you that. can also. Okay, <laughs> welcome, Gilbert. I know, Kiri, you understand what happens at the office. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, what I was saying, like, Nashkuru uh, Sana for the word that uh, Brother Robert has shared. Uh, he, uh, he has reminded us of Kutosheka uh, and with whatever we get, uh, whatever we god gives us and we should always depend in him at any given point and we have so many examples for uh, for, for example on myself that uh, god has shown me kuwa ile kidogo ambao umekupatia hiyo ndio utashike na it goes back to even uh, back in school maybe you remember back in school when you used to do exams and you get some funny grades so some people uh you know sometimes it's god who maybe wanted you to maybe get those grades that you got because of the trust that you uh the trust that you are doing that exams with uh, the honesty that you are doing that exams with so finally unapata you are because you are honest and you are cont- you ulitosheka na ile uh the b plus or the b or the c or the whatever grade that you got unapata mungu anakuwezesha anafanya rahisi sana for you even to get employment even to get other opportunities ahead but maybe say for some people who are not how kutosheka na whatever maybe god alikuwa mpatie unapata mtu anasema okay no i'm not satisfied with whatever i'm getting i'm not satisfied with the this one child that god has given me i'm not satisfied with uh, a b c d no you end up losing 
losing kupoteza kila kitu so uh, i think from the sermon ametukumbusha mambo mengi sana whatever uh, you ask from god whatever you depend on just trust in him and uh, to share with whatever god gives you because as the bible says he, he always has the good plans for you and plans for prosperity uh, thank you Amen. Thank you very much for that. Je, yeah, kuna mwingine? And as we continue, if you have a prayer request maybe or if there's something that you want us to pray about, when is I type up the chat box to tawa kwa pamoja. Is there anyone that maybe has something in alignment or in alignment or with being content ama ningependa kuongeza some verses? Is there anyone? Hmm? Then I believe we are truly content. Eh? It has been a very powerful one. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, I needed to be reminded of this in this moment where I am. And uh, I am grateful for that. Hatuna um, mengi. I would just uh, remind us that let us just continue to pray to God and let us continue to buy by his word. Mimi on Sunday sikupata team prayer team ya this month. Kama kuna mtu labda alipata, tafadhali share with us though even as we pray and fast tomorrow we can be together. But if bado hajatuma, we all know that we are praying for the peace from God. So let us uh, put that into consideration. And Sina Mengi, we have my church. Let us also continue to pray for Ruben as even they make preparations to go and uh, lay down his bar for rest. So let us continue praying for Ruben and his family. And for any other thing, just share it to our group. Sadaka. Tunatumia tu treasure wetu usisahau kutoa sadaka. Ah uh, ni hayo machache sina mengi. I'll welcome Elizabeth labda utufungie kwa mwaka. Elizabeth Okay, we have a verse from Sister Michelle. Luke chapter 1 uh, verse 16. Luke Chapter 1 verse 26 sorry kama ni mimi ndasieni vizuri let me look this is for mavuno mavuno so i will read now in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent by god to a city of galilee named nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David the virgin's name was Mary and here quick please confirm me with the thing that I'm reading the share yes okay so the prayer theme for this month is mabuno harvesting and uh, the scripture as you have been it has been shared it is Luke chapter 1 verse 26 so this was like a blessing that uh, the angel Gabriel was sharing with me that unto her you know a son born so as you pray let us put that uh, let us put that in our hearts and in our minds so thank you very much Michelle uh, Elizabeth so you come and sikia ukaweza kutuombea katupongee kwa maombi Elizabeth ni kama kidogo eh she cannot connect Elizabeth so let us go Father Elizabeth wa ongei yeye wanasikiza tu labda umjaribu Samson
e, Samson. Samson unaweza kutufungia kwa mambo tafadhali. Hi, Mr. Tommy Natu. Okay, Samson, yes, go on. Oh, good afternoon. Is it good evening? Good evening. Thanks for the work. Yeah. Listen, man, what is it? Yes, I'm contented with whatever that I've done. Yes, yes. And uh, I really miss you guys. And it's my prayer that Mungu azidi kuwalinda na kuwatenda mema kila wakati. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the word that you've granted unto us. Thank you for the protection. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you for our families, friends, and relatives. Thank you for the work that you've continued to bless us with. As we pray, Lord, we pray that you bless us. Amen. Amen. Night, everyone. Amen. Good night. Yes. Mm-hmm.